Bernard, we're here at the FQXI conference on physics of the observer, and many of the physicists I've been talking to have what I'd call a deflationary approach to the observer. It's sort of a, an interactive system or a, a kind of an obscure measurement of some kind. Uh, you have a stronger view of the importance of, of consciousness in, in, uh, in understanding physics. How, how does that work? The point is that most physicists take the view that consciousness is just an, an epiphenomena produced by the brain. Right. And indeed, many physicists therefore think it's essentially independent of physics itself. That as physicists, they don't really have to confront the problem of consciousness and mentality. Mm -hmm. Because after all, physics is primarily concerned with the, the third person perspective, sure. the objects in the outside world. And when you're talking about consciousness, and mind, you're talking about a first-person perspective. Mm -hmm. and, and the real issue is how can physics ever accommodate that first-person perspective? And the fact is that most physicists take the view, well, it probably is nothing to do with physics at all. In other words, clearly brains exist and, and brains are physical systems. But the hope is, I would say, of many physicists, that we never will have to try and explain consciousness because it simply is beyond the domain of physics. It's not the sort of phenomena which physics can describe. That's to say, when I say consciousness, I mean first personhood. You know. Sure. So if we go back to the original formulation of uh, quantum mechanics, consciousness or awareness seemed to play a part in the, in this, in the structure of quantum mechanics, but today, many say that that's not relevant. Do you think that consciousness is critical for quantum mechanics in terms of the wave function, in terms of involvement? Because for there, there was the school, of course, the Copenhagen interpretation, Niels Bohr, etc., and some people continue to feel that's important. Well, the one place in physics where consciousness does potentially come in is, as you say, in the context of quantum theory. Because people, some people have suggested that the reason the wave function collapses is because it is the observer, the consciousness of the observer, which actually collapses the wave function. Now, I have to say, though, that even though the, the physicists who are postulating that were fairly eminent physicists mm -hmm. among the founders of quantum mechanics, it is not the primary view. I think most physicists would prefer to think that the collapse of the wave function was, was determined by something other than consciousness. However, that does not mean that the... the hypothesis that consciousness collapses, the wave function is, is dead. On the contrary, there's still quite a number of people who would, who would push that view very strongly. But the point I want to make is that even if you do believe that consciousness collapses the wave function, that hasn't really accommodated consciousness within physics. It's saying that, in some sense, quantum theory is weird, and therefore in, maybe that will explain consciousness, which is also weird, but, but in fact, we don't understand quantum theory anyway. So to say that we've explained consciousness or mind in terms of quantum theory seems to be a bit illogical, because it's just explaining one mystery in terms of another. So we really need to get consciousness into physics in a, in a more fundamental way. So if we have consciousness and we have quantum theory, the arrow of causation can go in either direction, which are projects to explore. Certainly, some people think that you need quantum physics or some other way to explain consciousness other than purely simply system, systemic neurophysiology or, or neuron, uh, neur neuronal stuff, which is what I did my doctorate in. Um, but the other way is the causation is uh, from consciousness to quantum mechanics. So we have, we have it going both ways, and, and they could relate to each other. One could be right and the other wrong. Both could be wrong. I mean, you have all the different permutations there. Um, I'm interested right now in, in the importance of, a, of, of the observer. What is an observer in physics, in quantum theory, in cosmology, which you've worked in? How important is that concept of observer? What does it mean? And do we have to have any understanding of consciousness to understand what an observer is in quantum theory or in uh, cosmology? Well, the whole question of what constitutes an observer in quantum theory, what does actually collapse the wave function, it is, is, is very contentious because although we said that some people would like to think it was consciousness collapsing the wave function, other people would say, well, no, it can be 
basically any detector, yes, could, right. even, a, in a, even a TV camera might be sufficient to collapse the wave function. And if you do believe it is consciousness, what level of consciousness does it need to be a professor of mathematics? <laughs> or or can, a, can a cat collapse the wave function? Can, a, can a, an amoeba collapse the wave function? So it's, it's all completely unclear, and there are different views about this. And, and of course, as I said, many people believe you don't need consciousness at all. But then if it's nothing to do with consciousness, the collapse of the wave function, you then have to ask, well, how does consciousness come into physics? Because quantum theory isn't the only context in which consciousness could right. rear its head in, in physics. How, how about in cosmology where you've worked, uh, the nature of the observer? W what, what are the characteristics of an observer in cosmology? Well, I would say the link with cosmology, which is in a way what got me first interested in the subject, came through the, the anthropic principle and the fact that the, the universe seems to be fine-tuned for the existence of observers. In other words, the fact that we're here asking questions about the universe seems to impose certain constraints on, on the constants of nature and, and the appearance of the universe. So that, if it, were the, if it were true, would suggest that the presence of consciousness in the universe actually does play a role. Now again, it's not, that's not saying that you've got a theory of consciousness. Sure, sure. But it's saying that consciousness does affect the appearance of the physical universe. So, so be, because the, whatever characteristics you need to have consciousness, which are galaxies forming and stars and planets and humans and uh, this whole sequence of events, whatever the physics that you need for those events to produce consciousness, you have to you have to have, and that's the structure of the universe we find, or we wouldn't mm. be here to be asking the questions. So this is a, a uh, the idea of an observer as uh, part of a fine-tuned universe is also very controversial am among of physicists. Of course, and, and uh, most, all these ideas are controversial. And, and mm. most physicists try to avoid an anthropic understanding unless you get to a multiverse. Well, I would say that the concept of fine-tuning, I would say, is is it's fairly popular now. You're quite right. 20 years ago, it was regarded as very heretical. Nowadays, the, the concept of fine-tuning is much more mainstream. But the question is, to what extent is that fine-tuning anything to do with observers at all? I mean, mm -hmm. that's the issue, really. Mm -hmm. and, and I've often argued that it shouldn't really be called the anthropic principle, which relates to man, that in fact it's more to do with the, the, the development of complexity. Because if you look at these fine-tunings, it's not clear they are specifically to do with with consciousness. But it is, it's at least it's a possibility. I'm sort of giving examples of how possible links between consciousness and physics come in. And you, you asked about the link between consciousness and the universe. Uh, so I, I should perhaps mention the, the old idea of Wheeler that maybe you actually require consciousness for the universe to come into existence. This was the idea that you start with a big bang and the universe evolves through galaxies and stars and planets and people, and then the people look back, like us cosmologists, mm. and reflect on the, the Big Bang itself, mm -hmm. and sort of produces a, <laughs> a closed circuit which brings the universe into existence. So now, it's course, like a backward causation of some kind? Well, it's basically saying that the universe doesn't exist in any well-defined sense until an observer brings it into reality by observing it. So this relates to the first issue, the question of quantum collapse. So Wheeler is in that picture assuming that it is consciousness which collapses the wave function. As I said, m most physicists wouldn't favor that, and therefore most physicists wouldn't favor the idea that the universe was brought into reality on account of this, but at least it's, it's, a, it's so, a possibility. So the, the way that you would achieve that is to have some kind of multiple consistent histories that when consciousness formed, it somehow back selected the consistent histories consistent with its own existence? I'm well, this, this is, you see, in quantum theory itself, the idea is that the wave function does not exist in any well-defined state until someone observes it and collapses the wave function. So until then, you know, you have this superposition of possible states. But once someone observes, then it collapses to a real physical state. So that's when you have the transition from the quantum to the, to the classical state. And so in this particular picture, Wheeler's particular picture, you're not actually using retrocausation. You're simply saying the universe doesn't exist in a well-defined state until the consciousness has collapsed the wave function. Having said that, there are interpretations of quantum mechanics and quantum 
collapse, which also involve retrocausation. So that, your question is a relevant one, but it wasn't the one which was sort of in, in the mind of Wheeler when he suggested that. So those are the two ways, if you like, in which quantum mechanics, quantum mechanics and, and fine-tuning and cosmology may, in some sense, say that quantum th consciousness is, in fact, important to physics.